I'm sure most of us have had the experience of studying and learning a foreign language. And of the few of us who haven't, I'm sure all of us have had the experience of, of trying to talk to someone who doesn't understand our language very well and trying to communicate across a language barrier. Now, this might not seem like a topic for a sermon, but our faith teaches us that the differences of language that exist in the world are a punishment of sin. The Bible tells us exactly how this happened, and I thought I would talk today about this fascinating incident in the book of Genesis and tell you a little bit about the history of this event and how the commentators have explained it. Most Catholics know, of course, that the different languages that exist in the world came about because of an incident called the Tower of Babel. Most people in general probably at least know that much. And if we have ever gotten frustrated when studying a foreign language, we have probably found ourselves saying some not very nice things about the people who had to build that tower. And as we'll see today, those people definitely deserve every bad thing anyone has said about them ever since. They were very evil. The story of the Tower of Babel really begins with the story of the Flood. Noah and his sons and all of their families were chosen by God to survive the catastrophe of the Flood and to continue the human race. The Bible says that the Ark of Noah, after the Flood, landed in the mountains of Armenia. The location is really not known for certain. And then it begins to tell us about the descendants of Noah and give us the names of many of his grandchildren and great-grandchildren. It tells us also that Noah himself lived another 350 years after the flood and that his total lifespan was 950 years by the time he died. This is an astonishing fact when you think about the fact that he's one of the longest-lived people in Scripture, and he, he lived through what must have been the most stressful event any human being ever experienced, seeing the destruction of the whole world and having to rebuild it all from scratch. If he hadn't had that, that amount of stress, he, who knows how long he would have lived. Maybe he'd still be alive today. The Ark landed on a very high mountain, though, that is basically uninhabitable, and so the, what was left of the human race came down that mountain into the valley below, which was the Valley of Mesopotamia, the area of ancient Babylon, which is today northern Iraq. They lived there, and, and their numbers multiplied until the time they, they built a tower and, and their tongues were confounded. In fact, the Tower of Babel is called that because the area where this was built is called Babylonia. It's, it's really the same word. This is interesting when you consider that even atheist historians who don't believe in the Flood do confirm that the most ancient civilization known in this world is that of ancient Babylonia. And obviously, this is the most ancient civilization because it was the first one that was built after the Flood. And the Flood, of course, destroyed any remnants of, of the civilizations that existed before it. The Bible tells us that one of the descendants of Noah was a man named Nimrod who founded the kingdom of Babylonia in the land of Senaar, which is today called Sumer. And, and Sumerian civilization is, is a, basically the same as Babylonian civilization. And the Bible says the earth was of one tongue and the same speech. The Tower of Babel was built about 170 years after the flood, and this number is calculated by combining several clues that are given in the text. The calculation is a little bit complicated, but that gives us an idea that we're, we're several generations in from the time of the flood. And it says everyone spoke the same language. Now, it's an interesting question what language this was that they spoke. What was the original language of the human race? 
And most of the fathers of the church pretty much agree on strong evidence that this language was Hebrew. The reason they, they believe this is that the names of most of the people mentioned in the Bible before the flood are almost all Hebrew words. And there's no other language in which those, the, the names of those patriarchs have any meaning. And people's names in, in the Old Testament in ancient times usually had uh, a meaning or a significance. And we'll see later that there's good reason to think that the Jews also spoke the original language of the human race just as they, they kept the original truth about God, the, the true original religion. So the story continues. It says, Each one said to his neighbor, Come, let us make brick and bake it with fire. And they had bricks instead of stones and slime instead of mortar. And they said, Come, let us make a city and a tower, the top of which may reach to heaven. And let us make our name famous before we be scattered abroad into all lands. And it says, The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of Adam were building. And he said, Behold, it is one people, and all have one language. And they have begun to do this. Neither will they leave off from their designs until they accomplish them. Come, therefore, let us go down and there confound their tongue that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them from that place into all lands and they ceased to build the city. And therefore, the name thereof was called Babel because there the language of the whole earth was confounded. And from thence the Lord scattered them abroad upon the face of all countries. So there was a certain amount of guilt involved in the people's motives for building the tower. And people have explained the the motives of these people in various ways. And there's a theory that was uh, given by Josephus, the ancient Jewish historian, who thought that the, the purpose of the tower was to prevent God from destroying the human race again by a flood. He thought they wanted to build a tower that would be so high that if God ever wanted to flood the earth again, they could climb up the stairs to the top of the tower and be above the water. Or others have suggested that since God promised never to flood the earth again, they thought that next time he might punish the earth with fire. And that's why they used bricks that were made out of clay baked with fire because those are pretty much fireproof and they would be safe from a fire inside the tower or, or safe for a while until the, the bricks were got hot enough so that they would, they would be too hot inside the tower. These theories don't seem quite as likely as what the Bible says, but of course the Bible tells us what the, the main motivation was. And it says that they essentially built a tower out of pride and vanity. First of all, they wanted to build a tower that would reach all the way to heaven, and they wanted to make their name famous. So this tower was built not to glorify God, but to glorify themselves. And notice also that the people said, let us build this tower before we are dispersed to all the lands. What happened was that the human race settled in the valley of Mesopotamia and as they multiplied, eventually they realized that the area was too small for everyone to live in it and they would have to spread out across the earth. And this tower was intended to be a sort of monument to the human race before they they, they spread out. But they should have instead built a a great and glorious temple to God to honor him, not not themselves. And and this is the sin they committed, pride and vanity. So it says, God changed all of their tongues. This means that God took away the knowledge of Hebrew, probably, from most of them. And at the same time, he gave them a different language instead. Now, not every single human being was given a unique language, but rather 
every tribe or extended family was given its own language so that everyone just sort of went home to their own their own tribe and each tribe left as a unit to some different part of the earth when they realized they couldn't talk to the rest of the people living in this area. And you might be wondering what happened with Hebrew. How do we still have this language if everyone's language was changed? And there's a very interesting answer to that question. One of the descendants of Noah, who is mentioned in the the genealogies of Noah, is a man named Heber. And tradition says that he was the only one who kept the faith and kept good morals during this time period, along with his whole family. So he refused to participate in building this tower. So because of this, his language was not changed. He was not punished by giving it, being given a different language. And so he continued to speak the original language of the human race. And since his name was Heber, that language was named after him. It was called Hebrew. And his family and his descendants from that point, they, they continued to speak this language, and they preserved the true faith and the true religion. And a few generations later, it was one of his descendants, who was Abraham, whom God called to found the Jewish people. And that is how the Jewish people also have the the language of Hebrew. The Bible says that this place was called Babel, which means confusion, because that's where the languages were all confused. Now, where this tower exactly was, or whether anything of it remains today, is not known for certain. There's a historical record of of the foundation of a large tower in the ruins of ancient Babylonia that many people think might have been the Tower of Babel, and it's certainly possible. Unfortunately, the, the ruins of this don't exist anymore today. The story that that you can find in in the history books is that Alexander the Great tried to rebuild that tower on the foundation, and in the process of trying to build the tower, the the whole foundation fell apart, and there's nothing left of it anymore. There's another city of the same time period, a short distance away, called the city of Borsippa, And interestingly enough, there's the remains of a large tower that was built there too. And there is an inscription in these, in this, uh, this foundation that says that the the inscription was made by King Nebuchadnezzar in the seventh century BC. King Nebuchadnezzar is also a figure in, in the Bible too. And he wrote in this inscription that in the year 653 BC, he built his own tower on top of an original foundation of a tower that had already been there when he got there. And he says that that foundation he built on top of was the tower where the languages of the world were all confused. And there is a little bit of remnant of of the tower that he built on top of that. But in any case, the Bible seems to imply that people didn't get all that far in building this tower, so there, there may not be any remains of it at all. The Tower of Babel, like so many stories in the Bible, shows us the constant depravity of the human race. These people were descended from the one man who had been spared a catastrophe that destroyed the human race because of its sins, practically the whole human race. And he was still alive when they were building this tower. And we can imagine he must have warned them against it and, and, and protested. And they didn't listen. And yet before they were able to, before they were dispersed throughout the world, what did they do? Did they try to appease God for their sins? Did they ask God's blessing on, on their their dispersal? No. They they built a monument to themselves when they should have built something to honor God. And there is something very modern in, in what they did to this, this glorification of themselves, this idea that, that the human race is the greatest thing there is, that we have very much today. 
so many of the great achievements that, that people accomplish today are, are done for exactly the same motives. And if we look at Vatican II, that is the religion of man. It makes mankind... It, it, man decides what he wants to believe and what morals he chooses to obey in, in the, the religion of this new church. But this story shows us God's terrible hatred of pride by this terrible punishment that he inflicted on these people that we have all suffered from ever since. Anyone who has ever studied another language knows how, how difficult it is. It really is hard. So let us always be humble and attribute anything good in ourselves to the glory of God, as the saints always did, and not seek to glorify ourselves. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.